look let's look at solving equations using both properties and the, the key thing here is the first step is to make sure that you have your variable terms on one side and you have your constant terms on the other side that is like the important step right here and you can do this because you can move terms from one side to the other by using the addition property you can do that so we're just going to start off with a few small examples and we're going to work our way up to more difficult and complicated problems. What you need to understand with these problems though, anytime you have a problem that looks different and looks new or weird, it only takes about one or two steps to get it back to something that you already know. And that's your job. How can I get it back to those single step problems that we had on the board? Or the single step problems that were in the previous videos, right? So when I look at this guy, I see that I have a variable term, a constant term, and a constant term. How do I go about getting these guys separated? What do you think you would do? Uh, Move the 19 to the other side, right? This is your only variable term, okay? So this is a guy I need to get by himself. So if I add 19, that is a proper use of the addition property. So the 19s, I cross them off, but what, is, what does that really mean they do? 2x equals... No, what, what, when I do negative 19 plus 19, what's really going on there? Yeah, zero. It equals zero. Yeah. Okay. Now, something else, we were kind of doing this last time. Make sure that you understand where your equal sign is. What I'm doing on one side, I'm doing on the other side. The exact same way. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. So now, just what you're saying... I have 2x is equal to what? 2x equals 64. Am I done? I'm going to divide by 2, but what you see that I have here is something just like what we had that was a single step problem, right? If I had given you before 2x equals 64, you would just, what you were already telling me, divide both sides by the coefficient, which is 2. So what does x equal? 32. x equals 32. How is that? Perfect? Yeah. All right. Well, let's try another one. The more of these you do, the better you will be. And there's no telling how many hundreds of these problems that I've done in my life. And I'm pretty good at them. So, what will I do for this problem? 18 minus 3x equals 54. Subtract 18. You see, this is the only variable term you have, so move the 18. Now, what if I didn't have a minus here? What if I just had this? 18, I put 18 underneath it. They, they don't cancel, right? They'd be like 18 and 18 is not zero, right? If I'm 18 in 18 years, I'm not going to be 18. I'm going to be 36, right? I'm not 18 though. I used to be. You cannot escape it. So the 18's cancel. What do I have now for my equation? Negative. Do I really need the negative? In front? Isn't the negative connected to the 18 or something? No. No, no the negative is connected to the 3x. All right, good. Negative 3x equals what? 36. 36. Take it home. Bring it home. Okay. Finish it. All right. Then you divide it by negative 3 on both sides. Divide, do I divide by the x? No. Just the? Negative 3. Just the coefficient of negative 3. And then we have? Um, we have negative uh, 12. Negative 12. x equals negative 12. Questions about that one? Awesome.